The word of our God that we consider together today is recorded in the book of 1 Samuel in the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And this is the word of the Lord. In the news this past week, there was the story of a teenage girl whose father had died several years ago. Each year on the anniversary of his death, she writes him a letter on the side of a helium balloon, and she lets that go, hoping that it will reach him in heaven. This year, for the first time, she received a response from someone who lived 400 miles away. The woman who found that letter on that balloon arranged for all kinds of cards and gifts to be sent to this girl who still so much misses her father. That girl's actions reflect, I think, the desire that many people have. They would like to have some kind of message from heaven. Sometimes movies will show a scene where someone looks up and says, God, if you're really up there somewhere, please let me know what I should do. Have you ever wished for something like that? Ever wished that God would give you some guidance with a difficult decision that you have to make? Ever wish that God would give you some assurance that Everything is going to be all right. Ever wish that God would speak directly to you? In today's Bible reading, God did exactly that. He spoke to a young boy named Samuel. Samuel was staying at the tabernacle of the Lord, learning to serve the Lord from Eli, the high priest. Samuel had lived there since he was very, very young. You maybe remember how his mother, Hannah, promised the Lord that if she had a son, she would dedicate him to serving the Lord all the days of his life. And Samuel was then brought to the temple as a very young child for Eli to teach him and train him. Samuel's mother, Hannah, recognized that each child was a gift from God, a child of God to be raised for God. Hannah's deep love and respect of God and his word were powerful blessings for young Samuel. And now we are told one night as Samuel is lying down, sleeping near the Ark of the Covenant, probably in a room built just off to the side of the tabernacle, he hears a voice calling his name. And we are told that Eli the priest was 
very old and nearly blind, so he likely called Samuel fairly often to help him with things. So Samuel figured it must be Eli who was calling him, so he went and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. And then Samuel hears the voice a second time. And to him it certainly seemed like there could be no other person possibly calling him other than Eli. So again he went, and again Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. And then a third time he hears that. What would you have done if you had been Samuel at that point? I think I might have been afraid to go disturb Eli a third time in the middle of the night. I might have decided that maybe I was just imagining things, but, but Samuel knew that he was really hearing something, so again he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, you called me. And by this time, Eli is figuring out that something must really be happening, so he told Samuel, if it happened again, he should say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and lay down and waited. And that fourth time, the voice called him, to which he responded, Speak, for your servant is listening. Now this was the first of many times that God would appear to Samuel to personally speak with him. But Samuel always remembered what Eli had told him. When the Lord is speaking, there's just one thing to do. To listen. To listen carefully. To listen humbly. To listen obediently to listen willingly with the heart of a servant. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Is that your prayer also? Now you might think that if God would speak to you the way that he spoke directly to Samuel, that of course it would be easy to listen to him. But you do know, don't you, that God is speaking to you. God is always speaking. He speaks through the power and the wonders of nature. The psalm writer says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. God displays his power in ocean waves. God displays his wisdom in the intricate complexity of every cell in your body. God displays his greatness in the vast distances of the universe. God is also speaking through our consciences. He puts his voice inside of us to, to accuse us when we have done something that is wrong and sinful. And that voice lets us know that we are accountable to him for every insulting word, for every lustful thought for every angry response, for every opportunity to love and serve others that we leave undone. But if that is all that we heard from God, that he is powerful and that we have offended him with our sins, we would have to be absolutely terrified. God also speaks of his love for us. God also tells us of the solution, his solution, for our sins. Now God tells us those things only in one way. He doesn't tell us that through a conscience. He doesn't tell us that in nature. He doesn't tell us that even through a beautiful sunset or something like that. These things he tells us only through his word. And that means... We need to listen carefully and humbly and obediently and willingly with a servant's heart. Are you a good listener? When others are speaking, do you listen well? Does your spouse or your parent or your child ever have to say, are you listening to me? How about when God is speaking? Do you listen to what God has to say? 
Now, listening is not an easy thing to do. Listening isn't easy because there are a number of things that can get in the way of our listening to God. Our pride can get in the way. We may think that we know what we need even without God. And so God's words about the seriousness of our sin might bounce off of us because we don't really feel that our sins are, are, are that bad, certainly not like other people who do really terrible things. And then we miss out on appreciating a Savior who loved us and gave his life for us because nothing less than that can save us from our sin and guilt. Sometimes fear can get in the way of our listening to God. We might be afraid that we're not going to like what we hear from God. might be afraid that if we listen to him that then we're going to have to change some things. We might have to change the way we speak when we get upset or when we're trying to impress our friends. We might have to change what we like to watch on television for entertainment. We might have to change the way that we spend our money. And so it's easier to just kind of listen at a, a distance. Sometimes anger can get in the way of our listening to God. If our life is not going the way that we would like it to, we, we might tune God out saying, since I'm hurting, God must not care for me. Sometimes people say, where are you, God, when I'm hurting? And if we listen, God is saying, do you want proof that I'm with you always? Look at how my own son hurt for you. I gave him up for you. I will also graciously, along with him, give you all things, even in those times when you are hurting. There are other times we might think that we're listening even when we're really not, because we think we know what God is telling us. It can perhaps happen like this. Maybe we went to Sunday school and confirmation class, and it didn't always seem to us to be all that exciting or important, and maybe the pastor was a little bit boring, but, but we sat there, and then we, we kept coming to worship, at least, at least sometimes, and, and, and listened, but maybe we didn't really listen. I'll give you an example of, of something that I've experienced a number of times. Sometimes, when, whether it's in a confirmation class or a hospital visit, I'll have opportunity to, to ask people about what makes us right with God. And often the response will come back something like, oh, well, I'm right with God because, well, maybe I'm not exactly sure. And, and then I'll say, think about it this way. Suppose when it comes time for you to leave this world, if God would say to you, why should I let you into heaven with me? What would you say to him? And sometimes the answer comes back, well, because I try to be a decent person. Because I try to treat others the way that I want them to treat me. And, and I go to church at least fairly often. Was that what God says? Is that what they really heard from sermons and, and in Bible studies and classes? Now, if God would ask you that, why he should let you into heaven with him, why you are right with him, I pray that you would say, oh God, I've sinned against you in my thoughts and my words and my actions. I admit to you that I am unworthy of your love and deserving only of your punishment. But God, have mercy on me because your own son died to, to take away my sins. I don't deserve that love, but that's the love that he's shown to me. He is the way and the truth and the life. I'm depending on Jesus alone. Well, that, of course, is exactly what God tells us. But that isn't always easy for us 
to listen and to hear that. Because our own sinfulness is hard for us to admit, and God's grace is not what we naturally expect, and the devil is always trying to make us think that God's word really isn't so necessary or so important. And it all reminds us that listening takes a lot of work. We need to to really work to listen carefully and humbly and obediently and willingly with a servant's heart. Listening is not something that we can do when we're in a hurry. If we're thinking about all the things that we want to do later in the day after we've given God an hour of our time in church, or if we quickly skim through a part of God's word that we're reading at home, then we're not going to hear everything that God wants us to hear. We need to listen slowly and attentively. We need to remember that we're not giving God an hour of our precious time. Rather, we're spending an hour of his time that he gives to us to use for what he says is most important. We are to listen because he is speaking. You don't have to look up to heaven hoping for some kind of message from your God. God is always speaking. Your God who has loved you from eternity and has chosen you in Christ to be his own speaks to you, proclaiming his love for you in Jesus who gave his life for you. God speaks words to guide you and to lead you through the light of his holy word. God gives you strength to sustain you through his mercies that are new every morning. God is always speaking in his word. That means we listen. Listen carefully in worship. Listen humbly in Bible study. Listen obediently as you you memorize portions of God's word and with the Spirit's help put them into practice. Listen willingly with a servant's heart as you schedule quiet time. Start with five or ten minutes a day to read God's word. Listen and learn and grow so that you eagerly pray as Samuel did. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Amen.